in this segment, uh, we continue further on our journey to discover virtual memory systems. And we start off with a quiz. Which is bigger, physical or virtual address space? Or it depends on the system. I would like you to think carefully about this uh, question and the answer will be apparent to you at the end of this, uh, this segment and, or I will give you the answer. All right, so let's go back and review memory management. In order to do that, first we will look at what are the different components that make up the memory of a process, the state of a process. We've already gone through this when we looked at process scheduling, look at the different elements, but we'll, we're going to revise that out, that part. So in general, your overall process space is organized as a linear collection of data elements, starting from address zero all the way up to the maximum that your system can address. So if you have a 32-bit system, then it's 2 to the 32 minus 1. Your process can address 4 gigabytes of state. If you have 64 bits, then it's 2 to the 64 minus 1, which is close to 16 terabytes of space. And it goes all the way from 0, so the starting address is 0, all the way to FFF, in this case, um, the maximum address. And the different data blobs decide at different pieces of memory locations. So if you have your heap, it grows upwards. You have your stack, that grows downward. Stack is typically located at the higher addresses because it grows downward. Uh, and then you have your global data and then all your code, not necessarily starting at zero. but And then you've got a lot of white space, this part here, which is not really allocated for any blob. So you've got your static storage, which stores all your global variables, uh, program runtimes, and so that stack, which stores all your function variables, local variables, the return address itself. And then you have your heap, which is really dynamic storage that you grab more space as you're going along the program. You've got a malloc and free, which are your mechanisms to do that. And in general, if you look at the compilation pipeline, you've got to read this figure left to right, right? So you've got a compilation phase, a assembly phase, linking, and loading. This is just a revision of things that you would have gone through in your compiler class. Normally, you write your program in this fashion. So you start your program, you write your function foo. And if you look at how this is going to work, once you assemble it, once you compile it down, you're going to get your standard set of push and incrementing your stack pointer operations, right? And then that gets for, you still have your symbols here. That gets further broken down into uh, just straight straight line assembly in this case. Um, then you link it against specific library routines. And if you look at that, your program now went from 0 to 75 to 0 to 175. This is because you had library routines. Like, for example, you start of main, when you have printf, all of those being compiled into the program. Then finally comes the loading stage. This is when your program count goes from being just inactive and just stay on your disk or memory to actually running on the system. So it's allocated physical memory, is moved into that physical memory and starts running. Please note that initially a program thought that it was running between zero to 175. But if you look at where it actually runs, it runs from 1100 to 1175 in physical memory. So transparently, we have relocated the program which thinks it's running between zero and 175 to actually physically run between 1100 and 1175. And this is the primary job of virtual memory management. It doesn't really deal with these compilation assembly linking phases, but essentially it goes between the linking and the loading phase. Right. So let's take a look at program relocation and how this works. In general, programs issue virtual addresses your machine understands physical addresses or your memory. And if virtual is really equal to physical, then we can't have multiple programs deciding concurrently, right? Because you have two different programs compiling at, you know, uh, whatever, and both of them trying to address the same location. We cannot tell up that because then that would be bad. Instead, what we do is we relocate the virtual address to physical address at runtime. That is the relocation phase. And while we are doing the relocation, we also do the bounce check to ensure that 
you don't read or write beyond your boundary in an evil manner. And if you look at the technique of relocation itself, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We we'll look at how it works. So in this figure, what I have is a program P, and its logical address space is in, shown in the green, zero to max program. And what we really are going to do is relocate it between 1,000 and 1,500 in the physical address space. Your physical address is really between zero and max, and we located it between a thousand and a fifteen hundred. And if you have a CPU issuing the instructions, what's going to happen? The first is the CPU is going to access the logical address. Okay. You check your limit to make sure that your program does not read beyond the five hundred address boundary based on its base to make sure that it's only reading its own locations. So do a bounce check. Once you do a bounce check, you let's say the bounce check succeeds, then you say that it got activated, the address is okay. You couple it with a base address, right? So once you do that, 